gentlemen, welcome inside the Pachanga Arena here in beautiful San Diego, California. This is boxing, this is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. And brought to you by Boost Mobile, Money is Power. And by the new feature film, Samaritan. Starring Sylvester Stallone, coming to Prime Video, August 26th. This bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Jerry Kuntu, Pat Russell, and David Sullivan. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Jack Reese. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, presented in association with Zanford Promotions. He weighed in at 142 pounds, wearing maroon trunks with black and gold trim. His record is perfect. 24 victories, no defeats. 23 of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Ensenada, Baja, California, Mexico, Omar Pollo Aguila! Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 142 pounds wearing red trunks with blue trim. His record, perfect. 15 victories, no defeats. 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Linares, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, Lindolfo Delgado. Lindolfo Delgado is the Mexican Olympian from Rio 2016. I did the math, Tim. And 39 and 0, 36 knockouts between these two. Dre, I don't think this fight goes the distance to me. Mm. Listen, I think this is an even matchup, but Delgado, where he's at, his skill set and ability, this is the fight that he's supposed to, to dominate. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but where he's at in his skill set compared to Aguilar, I think he's further ahead, and I want to see him take that step tonight. But Aguilar is not going away easy. Aguilar understands how important this fight is because he's 24-0 with 23 knockouts, and he said, I am tired of people saying that I'm only knocking out cab drivers and ice cream vendors. Tonight, I'm going after an Olympian, and that's going to put me at a different level. Tonight is his opportunity. Good stick, good jab to the stomach by Delgado. And there's that stick to the head as well. That's been the key for Delgado early on in this fight, wow. using that jab, despite the fact that he's at a two and a half inch reach disadvantage against Aguilar. Yeah, but he has a speed advantage. Mm -hmm. And quality of sparring advantage. That too. Nice jab to the body now from Aguilar. He returns to favor. Dre, you always talk about sometimes what your opponent does reminds you of what you need to do. Yeah. It's a lot you're thinking about in that ring, and sometimes you get hit with a shot or you get hit with the body shot, and it does remind you, hey, let me go down there as well. I'll be waiting on that. That's what you wait on. And you know, if you know a guy's on copycat, mm. set him up. Do something, allow him to do it, and then make, make him pay for it. And what we're talking about when we mean the Ooh, great sparring for at. Lindolfo Delgado is getting in, getting in there against guys like Jose Ramirez, Raymond Murataya, Giovanni Santillan, who we'll see on our ESPN show, among so many others, even Virgil Ortiz for his last fight. As long as you're not taking punishment in that gym, that kind of competition in the gym is extremely important and very good for you, and it will cause you to progress a lot faster than if you didn't have it. And look at the right cheekbone yep. of Aguilar already showing inflammation as he throws a nice combination and finishes it by digging to the body of Delgado. Yeah, Aguilar, he realized that Delgado was throwing a single jab the same pace, and he timed it that time. 
following it out with a combination. Uh oh. Blood alert for the light colored suits. Uh oh. The nose of yeah, Omar Aguilar is starting to leak. They messed up my mob suit. I ain't messing up. Yeah, no parts of that, brother. Hey, Dre, you haven't been dealing with this, but it's an issue. <laughs> Aguilardo trying to dig to the body, cut off that ring against Lindolfo Delgado. Good jab right there from Delgado. It's a chess game so far through one round between Delgado and Aguilar. Two Mexican power punchers with different skill sets. Hey, very well done, Lindolfo. How do you feel? How, how's this punching car? He's good. He's all right. Hey, that's the fight. You're just gonna keep using that jab. You see, his nose is already bleeding. He's inflamed. It's all behind that jab. Don't throw the jab and pull straight back because he's gonna land that overhand right on you. And if you do step back, keep that left hand up because I don't want you pulling straight back. On the inside, you were blocking everything. Hey, he's not on your level. Just stick behind that jab, and we're gonna outbox him. We've mentioned the acumen of a young trainer like Robert Garcia Jr., and those instructions demonstrate exactly his understanding of the game. Yeah, he's, you know, he's under his father, he's under his grandfather. I mean, he grew up in the game, and if he has a liking to the game, which he does, he can't help but grow and, and you know, gain their brain trust as well. But the ability to transmit Ooh. that as uh, Aguilar lands a nice overhand right on the chin of Delgado. We'll see if he decides to go right after him or if he decides to box and listen to his corner. Listen, Agu Aguilar coming out now. He, he turned his gears up. He's coming at Delgado because he didn't like that first round. He know he lost that first round and now he's trying to get some get back. He shouldn't like the first round. You just see the difference in height and reach. And even though they're just as tall as one another according to what they both list at 5'9", the reach definitely favors Aguilar and he's coming after Delgado here in the second round. There's a right hand available, and I see Delgado going for it. You know, he's off the mark right now, but ooh, ooh. that uppercut was nasty. Those are the kind of shots that Delgado has to land because Aguilar comes hard, but he comes the same way. His head is right in line to be hit with straight shots or uppercuts like you just saw, and he has to take advantage of that because Aguilar, when that rhythm starts to get going and that engine gets revved up, he's hard to stop. And there's that counter left hook from Delgado, and it's applauding Aguilar coming forward. And you see, now he's cut Delgado over the right eye. And this fight is getting the crowd going at the Pachanga Arena. There's blood from both fighters, or maybe it was just blood from the nose of uh, Aguilar that landed on Delgado's right eyebrow. We'll take a look at it. That's the key punch for Delgado's, the left hand. He can't get lazy with that, and he can't get tired or bored throwing it because that's the only thing that's going to keep the hard-charging Aguilar Ooh. back. And there goes those quick shots. You see the looping shots favor Aguilar, but the short shots favor Delgado. People, a fight just broke out. Mm. Fight is definitely stop, broke out stop, here. Stop, my break. Step out. There's a certain level of respect from both fighters, though, because Aguilar is not just walking straight in. He understands oh. that Delga he's got to find a way in against Delgado. Yeah, usually when you have two punchers, both guys are real tentative, but these guys are getting after it. You know, Aguilar just just turned the tempo up. That, that's to a success. He's letting those hands go. That's his chance to win tonight. He's got to be active. Stop, 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 Where you see, whereas stop, stop. you got Delgado that's looking for the perfect shots. But you have Aguilar just being busy. Two rounds of action, and you can see there's a lot of tension because this fight can turn on just one punch. The jelly is going to be the right hand. A power shot, either left hook or uppercut, something to follow that jab. Now. You see 
well you were able to land with those uppercuts when he was coming in. But you've got to spin out. Don't stay on the ropes once you throw. If you stay against the ropes, it looks like he's controlling the rhythm of the fight. So you don't want the referee, uh, the judges to give him those rounds based on that. Those are the instructions from Robert Garcia Jr. in that corner. Look. I Aguilar is loose with his punches. He's loose with his power. He's letting his hands go fluently with combinations. Where you have Delgado, he's a little bit more tight with his shots. So it's one, two punches at a time. It's not fluent. You see a 15 to 20 advantage for Aguilar. 83 punches thrown by Aguilar compared to 30 to 68 total for Delgado. So that's a huge difference. So what I'm trying to say is, is that Delgado can get outworked mm -hmm. because he's only throwing a one-two shot at a time where you have the more fluent Aguilar letting his hands go. And Delgado's a guy that likes to measure twice and cut once. He wants to make sure he's got the perfect shot through there before he lands, but Aguilar's taking that away. Ooh, he's not allowing Delgado to think the way he wants to, so Delgado has to trust his instincts and let the shots go, and Aguilar needs to keep doing what he's doing. Nice combination there from Aguilar. He's turning up the heat here in round number three. Connects with the body shot as well. And here comes Delgado with a combination of his own. See, but Delgado, when he let his hands go, he has to recharge. Whereas Aguilar, he, he don't have to recharge. He can let his hands go right back. Oh, left hook from Aguilar. And Delgado takes it so far. But, man, many more of those. That explosiveness is definitely out there for both guys. Stop, stop. Come on, guys. Stop wrestling. Stop wrestling. Box. See what you're seeing and what we're witnessing right now is two undefeated fighters oh. trying to teach the other one how to lose. Left uppercut from Delgado follows it with a left hook and then the right hand to the chin. The key for Delgado is the jab. He's got to get that left hand out there. Nothing's going to slow Aguilar down. Not even the wide shots that Delgado's throwing. He's got to come behind the jab, freeze Aguilar, and then let the shots go because nothing is slowing Aguilar down. Oh, you see the swelling under the right eye of Delgado as well, Tim. Oh, nice straight right from Delgado. The slight movement. It's a beautiful thing to see. You know, that's boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Using movement, picking up your feet, changing locations, allowing your man to come in and make a mistake, and then you're looking to get offline and make him pay. That's what Delgado is trying to accomplish. Ooh, Delgado put himself in a very dangerous position coming in, and Aguilar just missed that counter right. But you see the legs of Delgado giving him some trouble there. Stop. 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 Separate. Third round in the books. We'll listen in to Omar Aguilar's corner, where his father has the word. You're doing well? You okay? You're doing well. You're doing well. Take a deep breath. Hey. You hit him, it's going to hurt him. Throw your shots, let your hands go. So we got his father, Omar Aguilar Sr., and his brother, Ruben Pollito Aguilar, who is also a fighter worked in the corner of Omar Aguilar. Two undefeated fighters at 39-0, combined 36 knockouts. This fight can end at any time. Do not blink as you see that Aguilar has been very twice as many punches thrown as Delgado, but Delgado has landed nine punches more. So it's about efficiency in this fight. I don't think it's the one big shot that Delgado throws that's going to stop or turn away Aguilar. He's got to let his combinations go, and he's got to come behind the jab. The jab is what started all the trouble for Aguilar in that first round. Big right 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 from Delgado. That hurts, and Pollo Aguilar, he has to hold on. And it's called not a knockdown, but it should have been here been. in round four. Delgado doing damage. Oh. He's measured the knockout puncher, and he's going right after Aguilar. Teeing off in the middle of the ring. The legs of Aguilar are looking wobbly here in round four. He's tucked 
too tough for his own good. Aguilar needs to hold right now. Not gonna do it, Tim. He's not gonna do it. He's gonna fight his way out of trouble. Oh, oh. right, left combination from Delgado, the Olympian who says, some see me as a pretty boy, some see the fact that I've got an amateur pedigree, but now he's tearing up the face of Aguilar here, who's now bleeding from the right eye. He's gotta come behind the jab, Bernardo. Aguilar can take a shot, and he can see the big shots coming. That shot hurt Aguilar because it was an uppercut that he did not see. Those are the shots that hurt guys that have good chins, the ones they don't see. All set up by the footwork. That's what set that shot up. Ran him right into it. Aguilar's not all the way back, but he's coming back in his head. It and looks he's... like things are getting clearer, but he's still hurt. And Drake, that makes him even more dangerous because he's hurt. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Listen, scoot to me. Aguilar's tough, too tough for his own good. He needs to recover, buy some time, clear his head, step back a little bit. It's not no, but he's coming tonight. forward. <laughs> it's not happening tonight. How about he comes back with a double jab, Tim? Oh, he can come back with a double jab, but he's still got to be leery because guess what? Delgado got something planned for him. He's waiting to tee off for him, set him up for something, and he's going to take his head off with it. Delgado went to the body with the right hook, but he really opened up when he threw it. And here comes Del uh, Pollo Aguilar. Aguilar knows one way, fight harder. That, too much desperation, Dre. Too much desperation. I'm on pins and needles right now, people at home. Mm. Oh, my God. That right uppercut from Sneaky Delgado. right uppercut right there from Delgado. Oh, there's that body Ooh. shot downstairs. Here comes Pollo Aguilar as well. This is what we expected. This is what we told you this fight would turn out to be. Oh! oh. My goodness, I do not know how Omar Aguilar no. finished this round on his feet. It's called Corazon. Let's listen into the Dolfo Delgado's corner. He is not on your level. Just keep boxing him. Move, use your jab. Did you see how you hurt him? When he comes in, you can catch him with a shot. That uppercut is there for you. Do not stand still. This dude is not on your level. No, the knockdown. Absolutely should have counted as a knockdown because Aguilar held on for dear life and was going down as he grabbed the legs of Lindolfo Delgado, who landed 24-41, 59% of his punches, and they were all power punches in that round. See, that's why it's very important that, to learn different facets. You know, in the beginning, you saw Delgado trying to march forward, trying Stop. to be the boss, trying to stand his Stop. ground. Turn then around. all he did, one minor Box. adjustment, pick up my feet, make this guy try to locate me and catch him when he makes a mistake. This is why I said that even though the fight is evenly matched on paper, Delgado has things that he can do to really dominate the fight, but he's not always consistent with those yes. things. And Aguilar's not playing along, and he's a hard guy to turn away. And you see Aguilar's punch efficiency in terms of how many he lands per round going down in round three and four and the opposite happens for Delgado who's been pretty consistent and he lands a nice left hook there does the Olympian and make no mistake about it even though Aguilar is coming forward he's, he's he's taking a lot of punishment you see the punishment on his face it's not in him to turn away so Delgado has to find a way to force Aguilar to turn away but you can see the punishment starting to sink in on the face of Aguilar. And you can see Lindolfo Delgado starting to time Aguilar coming in. That footwork is giving Aguilar a lot of trouble because he doesn't have time to set his feet. And to Tim's point, that's the answer for Delgado. Move, move, play possum, and then explode and shock Aguilar. Mm. You can't hit him with a shot that he sees, he'll probably take it. But if you hit him with a shot he doesn't see, you get that reaction we saw the last round. I'll tell you another thing that I believe that Delgado right now is shot away from that could help him is going to the body When yes. he was able to land that land that uppercut he started off going to the body Start bringing those hands down. Oh, oh. He set up that uppercut, but it was nicely defended by the right glove of Omar Aguilar Aguilar trying to set up that long right hand he knows that's the shot that could change the fight for him Delgado being very smart. Yeah, he switched up the pace and he changed his game plan, which is even harder for Aguilar to deal with because now he's forcing Aguilar to move his feet, making him work hard, 
and then he's trying to run him in the shot. Yep. Aguilar wants you right in front of him. Delgado's not playing along. These are the ebbs and flows and adjustments we talk about in the middle of a fight. You see a fighter's IQ begin to rise all of a sudden during a fight because they unlock a major key. Two Mexican warriors in the ring right now. They combine for 36 knockouts and 39 victories. And in our main event tonight, it'll be Emanuel Navarrete against Eduardo Baez, another pair of Mexican fighters with a title at stake. Round six of a scheduled eight round fight. This duel between two undefeated fighters you'd expect later on in their respective careers. And you see the total punches through five rounds. 96 landed for Delgado against 82 for Aguilar. That changed completely from round three on. See what happened is these guys were fighting a fight one type of way. And then Delgado switched up the pace and Aguilar hasn't gotten the memo. So he hasn't made the adjustments. What's happening now is Delgado is getting ready to set Aguilar up to hit to land a devastating shot that could knock him out because he's not making any adjustments. His head is right there and he's taking a lot of punishment. So now the shots are starting to move him when in the first couple rounds they didn't. But the, but Aguilar just landed a nice counter left hook. Oh, he's dangerous yes. until he until this Ooh. fight. Oh, and right there with the he buzzed him. He buzzed him with that. Delgado went to sleep in that corner. You cannot allow a fighter like I mean not to do that, but if you can catch him coming in, that double impact is double dangerous. Double dangerous, baby. See, the problem with Delgado is, is that when he decides to move, Aguilar is already too close, and he's able to extend with his hands. And Delgado decided to come towards Aguilar instead of moving. Now he's back to moving laterally, and he lands a right hand and a nice right uppercut. On Aguilar. Stop, stop, See, when you, stop, when you stop, move, stop. you got to make sure you have the proper distance. You know, and so that way you can be set the punch or get out of the way. If you move while he's too close, then he can stand with his hands. Aguilar, he's going to be able to land something. See, just like that. Put you out, out of off position. You see that right hand of Aguilar also able to land. He spits and he blows his nose because there's a lot of blood emanating from both nostrils here. Oh, God, I was looking for one big shot. But that's a change. He'd been setting up his shots all fight. Now he's looking for one shot. Well, he's boxing, but within the boxing, he's still looking for that one shot because he knows that Aguilar is beat up. He knows that he's weakening him. You can feel it as a fighter. That's why he's feeling confident now to look for that one shot. He couldn't have got it early, but late in this Ooh. fight, he might come. There's that right he, hand from Aguilar. That's what I'm it's saying. It's always on the ropes for Delgado. That's the only time he gets hit. Delgado got to get back in the gym, and he got to work on tying up. He got to understand that there's a system with stop, tying up. Stop, now, he tied up right there, but he stayed his, kept his back on the ropes. Turn and get back to the center of the ring. Get, get more control of that real estate. Hey, they're trying to dig to the body as Delgado lands a double right hand, and then... Aguilar lands a nice looping left hook. You can see that right eye of El Pollo Omar Aguilar starting to close. And they're going to have to do some work on it here in the blue corner. Everything good? We're going to the side. Stop it, you're good. Stand up. Blink your eyes. Take a step forward. Are you okay? He's okay. Stay there. Time has been called to go back in. Hey, keep your guard closed. Hey, keep your guard closed and be smart. Stay alert. Throw some big shots. Round seven of a scheduled eight-round fight. Bernardo Osuna, Timothy Bradley, and the Hall of Famer Andre Ward from Pachanga Arena in San Diego, California. So far, Lindolfo Delgado and Omar Aguilar delivering 
on what they promised, the war. But it's not just the brawl, guys. This is high skill level art of war. Yeah, people don't think that when guys are standing toe-to-toe -to -toe, that that could be a skillful art. It can, especially when that's the, the, the main way a fighter fights. They learn these crafty tricks and ways to, to block shots and cut the power down and get their own shots. Hey. Good shot right there from Aguilar. Hey, this is high-level skillful stuff from both guys. Stop, stop, stop. got hit once again with his back to the ropes. Back to the ropes. Ooh. Now Delgado, though, he's got something to come back with. 113 to 101 is the punch landed so far through six. Delgado has to learn how to walk oh. and move. He wants to rest on the ropes in pose and doesn't realize that that's when Aguilar comes alive. That's where he had, he's had his best moments so far in this fight, right there when Delgado's just sitting against the ropes. That's a dead spot. You have to avoid it at all costs because Aguilar is still dangerous until the final bell. And he's slinging that right hand. Yeah. Bad intentions on it. Oh, short left hook from Lindolfo Delgado. But that's going to wake up Aguilar. And then you see Delgado having to hold on and tie up the offensive-minded Aguilar who goes to the body but then gets caught with an overhand right. Try to sneak it right up and cut in there too. It just missed. Delgado's not nice there angle. to be hit in the center of the ring. That was a beautiful angle right there. Created by the footwork of Delgado. Nice little shuffle around. For better or worse, Aguilar is all heart. And there's no turn, no backing down in his heart. And the times we do see Delgado just stand up against the ropes, doing Stop. what he's doing against a power puncher like Aguilar around. is difficult. Yeah, Delgado's got to learn how to walk and breathe and rest along the way. He <laughs> Fighters go to the ropes because it feels safe, but you can't do that with every opponent. This is not the opponent that Delgado can do that with. He's gotten hit and gotten hurt multiple times making that same mistake. The ropes are not your friends when it comes to an opponent like Omar Aguilar. Look, when you're picking up your feet like that, your opponent's going to attack you. But if, like Trey mm. said, if you're walking and you're set to punch, then you're able to move. You got to understand, you, you're in the air when you're moving like that. And when the guy's trying to cover ground on you. Stop, 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 Seeing a little stop, fatigue on Delgado stop in this the round. Tempo. We'll listen into both corners here as Aguilar goes into his corner once again, bleeding from his nose. Did a good job on that eye so far with the end swell. Hey, this is the last round. Take a deep breath, son. Hey, just go out there and throw some shots, man. Some water. <laughs> just go throw shots. Hey, they're going to send him out to knock you out. When he makes a mistake, you got to catch him with that uppercut, either the right or the left. He's going to open up, and that's going to give you an opportunity to catch him with big shots. Guys, the difference in each corner was notorious. The father of Aguilar had very little answers, and the precision of Robert Garcia and Jose Contreras in Delgado's corner was telling. Listen, Garcia is coaching his tail off tonight, and he has every time we've seen him. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's got to doing his thing now because his father's putting him in these big moments, but he's got a great career ahead of him as a coach because he's telling Delgado all the right things. Yeah, right here, a nice overhand right from Omar Aguilar, Tim. Man, he better stay off the ropes. I, I just, I, I'm just so confused. You can tie up a man, you get the underhooks, and you can push him back in the center of the ropes, make him use his legs, and then turn him so you can gather more real estate. Stop. These are little things that I believe that Delgado needs to go back to the gym. If he comes out here alive, <laughs> can work on it. It will help his game. Aguilar just missed with a grazing left hook there. He's got to know that the knockout is the only way he comes out of here undefeated tonight. Ooh, nice double right hand from the Olympian. See, when Stop. you step inside, that's Stop. where you're safe. Stop. Step inside Stop. safe. You let the referee do his job to separate you. Then you buy yourself some time. And you're killing the clock at the same time. 
There's that stick from Lindolfo Delgado. He takes a couple of shots, though, from Omar Aguilar, who's going to give you everything he has for the next minute and 40 seconds of this eighth and final it's round. It's I saw it's some it's fatigue it's on Delgado it's in the last it's round, it's and that's also followed him into this eighth round because this is where you want to close the show. He sent a message to Aguilar, the boxing world, anybody viewing at home that I'm the next one. Right now, he's not making that statement in this round. Nor is Aguilar allowing him to make this statement, mm. although he catches him with a nice looping Se counter left. Separate. You see the urgency of Aguilar. He's exposing himself. There's definitely opportunities that I see that Delgado can capitalize on, and he's doing that right now as Aguilar sits directly in front of him with his hands down. Right body shot and the three piece to the head from Delgado. Dead spot for Delgado, which allows Aguilar to land two or three shots that weren't devastating, but yes, they add up and their points. Oh, mm. nice counter left from Delgado, just allowing Aguilar to walk himself into a shot. Oh, a big right hand from Delgado. No adjustments by Aguilar and his team at all. They're allowing him to think his way through this, and he's got no answers himself, and he's got nothing from the corner from his father in terms of adjusting and changing. But this has been a great fight between two Mexican warriors, and someone's always going to go as they get a good round of applause from the fans. The final bell after that right uppercut from Lindolfo Delgado. And guys, what a fight these two gave us. That was impressive. I love every moment in this fight. You know, we saw, we saw it all. We saw two big punchers. We saw the toughness. We saw boxing ability. We saw one man actually change the entire fight from the second round on just by picking up his legs and moving, just making adjustments. It's beautiful work. We saw the heart of both men on display as well. I just think it was overall just a great fight. This is the kind of fight man. that both guys needed at this stage. Just found a home on either the body or face of Omar Aguilar. And how wide will the decision be? According to the judges, Mark Chinook has that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside Pachanga Arena, make some noise for an incredible fight. We go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Jerry Contu scores the bout 77-75. Pat Russell and David Sullivan both score the bout 79-73. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Lindolfo Delgado! Big win at the 16th fight bar for Lindolfo Delgado, the hardest of his young career against fellow unbeaten Omar Aguilar, who drops his 25th fight, the first loss of his professional career. A lot of respect between these two men.